One of humanity's dreams has always been expanding into the universe, but not because of Earth's limitations. Instead, it's driven by our thirst for conquest and discovery. Maybe we can expand to Mars or even to Moon. But what if I told you we could expand on an asteroid? Yes, you heard that right, an asteroid. And we can bring this plan closer to reality than you might think. Are we waiting for the stars to align or something? Let's ignite the thrusters and start moving. We arrive at something called the Main Asteroid Belt, where the most asteroids in our solar system reside. And how does this Main Asteroid Belt work? Main Belt asteroids orbit the Sun just like planets do, but they are located in the region between Mars and Jupiter. And they don't generally move beyond those boundaries in their orbits. But these asteroids are not actually the best pick because they tend to have chaotic orbits, even in this region. Then what do we do? Where else can we find asteroids? Well, there is a special type of asteroid called Trojan Asteroid. It's called like this because of its unique orbit. But what makes this orbit so special? To understand this, let's take a closer look at Jupiter and Sun. Let's say the distance between Jupiter and Sun is X. Now let's take another point in space behind Jupiter and build a triangle like this. Now let's name this point L5 and then mirror it. By doing so, we get L4. These points are called Lagrange points, where our much needed asteroids reside. And why do Trojan asteroids remain in such strange orbits? We can shortly say that Lagrange points are cozy gravitational spots where the Trojan asteroids can chill for eternity. But are these points really better than the main asteroid belt? They are. Because the orbits of asteroids in these points are much more stable and predictable, with minimal influence from other sources. Now if we take a closer look in the L4 region, we can finally discover our ideal candidate. Ector, the biggest Trojan asteroid in the L4 region. It spans an impressive 312 kilometers in length and 225 kilometers in width. Discovering an asteroid of this size is rare in itself. But finding one in the L4 region is indeed lucky. But before we pack our bags to move here, let's imagine the challenges of building our first base. First of all, the day and night cycle on this asteroid is only 14 hours long, with both day and night each lasting 7 hours. During the day, temperatures are around minus 100 degrees Celsius, while at night they drop even further to about minus 150 degrees Celsius. This signals extreme temperature changes. Second of all, the gravity on Hector is around 4,000 times weaker than on Earth meaning that even a small jump or push could potentially lead you into a slow drift away from the asteroid. And third of all, our asteroid has no atmosphere or magnetic field. This means we're fully exposed to the sun and cosmic radiation. These conditions are harsher than we would like for our first base. But what if I tell you we have one more option that will solve everything? By going underground. But how is this going to solve our problems? It seems like it might create even more trouble. Let me explain. By going underground, the temperature will be a lot more stable. At around minus 125 degrees Celsius. It is still very cold, but if the temperature is stable, it helps us a lot. What about the gravity? We can't change the gravity, but we can make it harmless. For example, since we're underground in a closed area, we can't drift into space anymore. Since we will have physical boundaries that prevent this, and this also gives us a psychological relief, knowing that we can't accidentally drift off into space. And lastly, how do we deal with the extreme radiation that we're exposed to? Very simple. 
we'll build our base deeper underground. And the sweet spot seems to be between 250 and 300 meters below the surface. Because at this depth, we start to have a radiation protection similar or even better from the one on Earth. So living underground does offer a lot of advantages. Then what are we waiting for? Let's start digging. Wait a second. Before we start, let's ask ourselves, what could be inside Hector? While we can't promise a flawless prediction, the next answer should be good enough. Hector's composition has five categories, rock, metals, ice, organic compounds, and cavities. The most interesting category is the organic compounds, which include amino acids. On our planet, we find amino acids in sources like eggs and meat. This naturally leads to one big question. Can we use the amino acids on Hector to make the ultimate protein shake? Unfortunately, the answer is no. Because even if we could extract the low concentration of amino acids from Hector, they are very likely to contain toxic or harmful compounds. Then why we can't just purify them? In theory, it's possible. But even after that, the end product has a low chance to be safe for our consumption. This is because the amino acids were formed through a non-biological process, inside an asteroid. Now that we know what's inside Hector, we know what to expect. But what we wanted to do anyway. What we wanted to do is to build a self-sustaining base inside Hector. So not just any base. It has to be the ultimate show-off. All right, let's dive in and kick off this mission. Our first step, we need to excavate a 250 meter deep access tunnel, creating our gateway to the underground world of Hector. Once we've reached the right depth, we will expand into a small network of tunnels. These tunnels will be six by six meters for smooth and efficient movement. For the main base, we're aiming for an eight meter wide and four meter tall space, providing the room we need for essential operations and living areas. After the excavation is complete, it's time to bring in our modular habitats. Imagine them like giant building blocks that can be assembled to create an adaptable base right here on Hector. Following this, we will focus on life support. Because even if we are safer underground, we still need to build systems that can generate oxygen, manage temperature, recycle water, and remove CO2. And let's not forget that each of these systems requires energy, which we will also need to generate. And lastly, what are we going to eat in our base? I'm pretty sure your packed sandwich is not going to last for long. These are pretty complex challenges, each deserving a deep dive of its own. To keep things focused here, we will save those details for another video. Make sure to stay tuned for more. With all this planning in place, there's just one thing left to do. Pack our bags and fire up the engines. We've made it, but this is where the real work starts. It will take a few years to complete our startup base. As we tap into Hector's resources, new sections and habitats will emerge, gradually expanding our starting point. And our true mission is nothing less than a self-sustaining colony of at least 1,000 people. It may sound like science fiction, but within the next 150 years, this ambitious vision is within our reach. The dream of expanding into the universe is closer to reality 
than we ever imagined. 